To make it as a footballer, you don't have to be the best player in the world. In fact, you can make a decent living whilst playing semi-pro if you're lucky enough. But in order to go from a good amateur player to stepping in the world of a paid professional, you're going to have to take a good old honest look at your game and ask yourself, what are some of the things missing from your skill set? And are there things holding you back from reaching your full potential? Here are just four to consider. Number one, you're lacking the awareness. Awareness is perhaps the number one attribute that make most professional players that step above. And it can literally be the difference between just a good Sunday league footballer and a fully paid professional one. And hear me out, whilst we are gonna talk about the most basic form of awareness, as that little look over your shoulder, awareness goes way beyond that and translates to many other aspects in your game. So see if you can see where awareness shows up in these next four points that we're gonna talk about. All right, where were we? The look over your shoulder. It's the simplest and easiest way to level up your game immediately. You'll go from making bad judgment calls and losing the ball 90% of the time to now retaining possession for your team and having a full sense of the picture that surrounds you. So to train this, it's important that you do it with and without the ball. To do it without the ball, you can set up cones in a random order and going backwards through them, looking over and alternating what shoulder you look over. Not only are you going to improve your awareness, you're also going to be strengthening your knees and your ankles, so double benefit. With a ball, you can dribble through cones, turning every few seconds. When receiving the ball, it's important to take a look before you're ready to receive the pass, and again when you're about to receive the pass so that you know where to turn. Number two, you're working too much on your weaknesses before establishing your strengths. Of course, we all want to be a well-rounded player, and it's important to work on all aspects of the game. And when you look at Iron Robin or Lionel Messi, both of which are very left foot dominant and very rarely use their right foot. Instead, they have focused a lot on their strengths and in turn have become a master of their craft. So to become a master of your strengths, you'll first need to identify what they are and then prioritize training them to really sharpen those skills that make you a better player. And this should be a lot easier as well. Working on things that you're naturally good at, it makes you feel successful. And in turn, you're more likely to put in the effort it's gonna to require to achieve mastery. But of course, be aware of your weaknesses and identify which one, if any, makes sense to add to your game. Number three, the ball moves faster than you do. And there's nothing more amateur than a good technical player that thinks of himself before his teammates. And we've all played with that type of player. Heck, you might even be one yourself. The player I'm referring to is the one that prefers to try and take on the entire team and showcase all the technical skills they have in their locker ahead of passing to a teammate in maybe a better position. Messi, Ronaldo, Thierry Henry, I'm an Arsenal fan, could all take on the whole team by themselves and at certain times have done so to great effect. However, the difference between a good amateur player and a professional is that the professionals, they know when to use it as a tool to benefit the team ahead of themselves. Whether it's to draw in defenders and create space for others, or to be the difference maker and added spark needed to open up the game. It's a tool they can draw upon when the time is right, but 90% of the time it's quicker and most effective to keep the ball moving between you and your teammates. Number four, you're just not fit enough. Aside from the technical differences between the pro players and the amateur players, perhaps the next biggest gap between the two levels is fitness. Pro players, well, it's their job to be a footballer. And whilst a lot of attention is placed on the technical aspects of the game, pretty much all of the technical capabilities are irrelevant if they don't spend the countless hours per week working to improve their fitness. And if you're looking to level up and give yourself the best chance of making it, well, then you're going to have to put in a lot more time on your own to work on your fitness. It's important to work on strength-based exercises to build power and resiliency, but also on your flexibility and, of course, cardio to not only ensure you can stay in the game to the very end, but to be able to really impact it into the dying seconds of the match. Aguero! Staggering! Just staggering! So with a good fitness base and a heightened level of awareness of what's around you, and a focus and dedication towards mastering the strengths that you bring to your teammates, you'll find that you'll have more time, more space, and more energy to give you that edge that you need over your competition. Now, I'm interested. What are some of the things that you've been made aware of about your own game that you're looking to either enhance or get rid of out of your game altogether? Let me know down in the comments, and uh, thanks for being here.